So welcome to a very special episode of the Modular Clubhouse. Um, so we're here today again with Arjun from um, Too Many Synths, whom we've interviewed, what was it again, like a couple of months ago, right? Yeah, time flies. The time yeah. flies, absolutely, yeah, especially absolutely. in these in these lockdown times, uh, at least for yeah. us here in the Netherlands, of course. <laughs> yeah, but I can still work, that's a good thing. Of course, yeah, we can still get work done and we can still, uh, well, do all these things from the uh, luxury of our own homes. Um, so I and, and, uh, and I, we've been talking about, okay, well, how do you now actually design uh, one of these great cases of him, uh, of his, sorry. And what we want to do is we want to just do as Arjun would, uh, would work with any of his, um, well, his customers and see especially how we can design them. So, uh, of course, this week has been a great week for you, uh, Arjun, where... Uh, uh, where Bo, of course, un, uh, un, un, <laughs> unleashed his uh, mighty beast upon the world. So how was that for you? Oh, uh, mighty! It's tiny beast. Uh, well, still, it's, it, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It compared to the other case you made for him, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, with Bo, that with Bo, it's always a, a special story. But uh, he he just had, had an idea of. Uh, I cannot. I don't think I can tell too much about it yet. He's he's he's, 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 he's not released any videos yet, so that that's all yeah, still yeah, yeah, under exactly. embargo. So, but I'm he, he had an idea of a, a, a kind of case to uh, instead of the huge monster big thing I made for him, uh, which was actually one of the big things which got uh, got all this started. Uh, but he had an idea for a smaller case, and um, and he reaches out to me and. Uh, yeah, well, and then we start chatting and joking, of course, because it's it's all about fun. And then yeah. uh, eventually I start making uh, making a design. I had some things I wanted to try. So there will be some new, well, not like developments, but like new features, which are quite interesting in the new case, um, which creates more possibilities or maybe not. But yeah. it's just, just a matter of trying and see how it works out. Um, Great. So yeah, that's that's cool. So we'll all need to wait until we uh, we see Bo's video yeah, it's up on to that. Go. It's yeah, up absolutely. To go. Well, and we'll all. Uh, so what I'll do is the moment um, that his video will be released, I'll be linking to that in the video description down below. Um, yeah. So for those of you who missed the interview from us a couple of months of months, months ago, uh, what's the cliff notes on how you actually got started making Eurorack cases, Ian? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, yeah, we talked quite extensively about that in the past. Yeah, the, indeed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it, it all started, like, with, I think, many of us uh, with a Cork Foca, with a small uh, drum machine, which I fall, fell in love with uh, within, like, 20 minutes in the, <laughs> in, the, in the front seat of a car of a friend of mine who had brought it uh, on a hiking weekend. And um, then I started collecting and etc. And I noticed that um, because I have a design label as well, so I know a little bit about designing and produ producing stuff. And I, I noticed that I had too many synths already quite soon. Uh, <laughs> and I, I had the necessity to organize it. And I think that's a, a problem uh, everybody recognizes because, yeah, it starts small and it goes big and it goes small again and organized. So I have quite an efficient setup myself now, but that's because I can organize it and make custom stands. So that's where, where it all works. So I made the stands for like a Kista Pro with focus above it or well, different synths, different sizes. They are all different sizes. And then I, I came across uh, Eurorack because I think the interesting there is that we defined a standard <laughs> together. Yeah. Like the 3U and the 1U, that's brilliant that there is a standard. And um, uh, I love standards because I like organizing stuff. So I actually set up a Markplatz, uh, like a marketplace advertisement to uh, ask if uh, uh, somebody wanted to, to join me and like explore the the deepness of a modular synthesizer. And that was actually Roy from the Syntax Academy. He's also Great. quite yeah. a, 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 a quite a how you say an active guy in the in the modular um, scene by now. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, we started making. I think it took one and a half year before making his case because uh, that it it stopped for a while and then. Reverb came along and I posted stuff and things went on quickly. Like, <laughs> yeah, like with most people down the drain or... Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, with me, it started, um, yeah, I started creating cases and then I was picked up uh, from Bo, uh, from Bo Beats, and uh, he wanted a huge case that was by then the biggest and I think still the 
biggest, well, yeah, sort of the biggest case I made so far. Yeah. And uh, also Sif came along from Loopop. Uh, Sif and Bo, they know each other. So Sif had a different request. And so things started rolling and it's super interesting. Oh, that's like, great. Yeah. And I, I think the, uh, the strength of what I do, but I, I have a, a friend of mine who helps me, um, is that I define a standard for myself because I, yeah, I know that people always want something custom or, or different. I want it as well. So I try to define a standard in which I can make things like on a proper way, yeah. but still be able to be flexible. So on my website, I have a configurator and I think you can choose like, I don't know, 60 different variations and all, yeah. of all these variations, like 3U, 6U, 9U, 10U, 12U. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe that's a good 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 idea to pull that up on, uh, on screen even. Yeah. So we can yeah. actually have a look at that because that's of course something that I'm assuming everyone who's been looking for Eurorack cases, they will, would have at least seen your uh, your website and see all the uh, the parameters you can play with. Maybe that's a good one. So this, you see the website now? Right? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. So this is the yeah this is the your custom case configurator and basically what I made is uh yeah with all instructions in it so it's all a step a step by step. Yeah. Um, but I start with the size. So basically you say okay I want uh, for example I don't know a seven U slanted case that's the one I made for loop up yeah. and an eighty four HP. And that already defines sort of a standard basic size. Uh, and then you can choose options because that's where I got the most questions about is like, oh, and what if I put uh, black rails in? And uh, what if I have a different insert? What does the price do? Um, yeah. Power supply, do you have power supplies? And I work with uh, modular sand lab yeah. with the Mimo power supplies and his bus boards, which is like quite a budget friendly, but strong power supply. Um, I recently built in uh, um, uh, a sector sector seven se sector seven the German uh, power supply mm -hmm. and yeah. of course Kolstad Lab is an option so there are multiple options of course but this is what I took in my configurator and then you have can have it with a cable kit or fully assembled well, etc finish color I have different colors uh, socket power cable a lid or not to cover it up some handles and then a shipping crate and that's basically it and then, yeah. then we have this custom amount and it's like okay that this happens a lot so this is maybe the most used feature because people <laughs> always want something different so what's then the most popular uh, customization that you do then well i have something for like a fully custom 3d model yeah. then i start from scratch like what we are going to do uh, but that also covers uh, the fact that I have to make a new mold because I, I need a routing mold and a production eventually. So that covers both because in the beginning I did quite some work in making models for people and then the order didn't go through. <laughs> cool. And yeah, that happens. And that's all fine, of course. But with this, it's also sort of a dedication, but it also means that I have a budget to create a new mold and everything. But yeah. sometimes it's something simple like, oh, I saw this beautiful reddish color can you make it in that and yeah sure i have to order it separately but um yeah at 20 yeah. euro and the bottom one etc so but basically it all starts with the size and i have of course all like uh, example pictures and you can see that on my instagram etc so but it basically always starts with somebody i like this uk's but can you also make it it's always like that so i yeah. like the i don't know the the what, 13 u yeah so it's 12 plus one but can i have the one u on top instead of in the middle yeah and yeah. uh it's 104 hp but i actually had put it in modular grid and i need 108 hp is that possible you know all these <laughs> like, small things and yeah. that's what i created for myself yeah that's great and so, so um just from a from from a um just from an organizational standpoint, so how, yeah. how how often do you get these sort of custom requests and how often do you get, okay, I'm just going to use the configurator and order that? How, how, what's the what's the trade-off between those? Hmm. Mm, I would say that in 70% of the cases, 80% of the cases, I had contact with somebody already on yeah. Instagram, on Facebook, etc. And then eventually 
they use the configurator to put in their order. And uh, this might be a good example for just now. But uh, they put in use the configurator to put in the order, and yeah. uh, uh, so they know what the price is. So because the configurator is also in a way a price yeah. uh, sum up, um, and then if they just put in the comments like as discussed on Instagram, the one you want up, then I know what to do. Yeah, indeed, uh, indeed. And I send an email, etc. But um, so may, may, oh, most cases are kind of custom. Yeah, I have rarely made the same case. They're always a little bit different. I can uh, imagine. Yeah, yeah. So and but this is good to see. So this is a, a brown colored uh, case, like the one of uh, Bow Beats. Yeah. Um, what you see on here on the left is you see my mouse is. Yeah, yeah, on. I can see that. Okay. On yeah. the left is the um, it's the side panel, and basically you see that I attach the si the rails to the side panels uh, with mm -hmm. the M5 volts. So if you have black rails, you get black bolts, and with alu uh, rails, it's aluminium bolts. Uh, and then you see the threaded insert, which came became sort of a trademark because I yeah. really love them in the brass color. And then you see that the side, so the side panels determines that this is a 12U. Uh, and if I need a 13U with a row on top or something in between, then I change that specific side panel. So yeah. that's the uh, that's the the part I put in the 3D model and the part I then cut with the laser cutter, yeah. Um, and then the horizontal parts, which are are the the wooden parts and the rails. That's what I cut to size, based on what the width of the case should be. Um, but that's really flexible because that's just a way of stretching and cutting it on a different point. Yeah, indeed. indeed. So for me, it doesn't really matter um, if I cut it 84 HP, 85 HP, 82 HP. It's all fine because, but I have, of course, some standards uh, uh, and there are some standards around and I have some, some tools, some moldings, so I can quickly set it to that specific size. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is, I estimate 84 HP. So that's 427 millimeters. Uh, uh, and but yeah, if I set in my my uh, circular saw, I can also put it on 427.5 yeah, or 426.8. So and you want it to fit. So I, I need to tune that a little. Yeah. Right? And then uh, the uh, the question is, how wide can you actually go? What's the the widest case you should, you you could actually create? Uh, I think bow was 200 HP. 200. Uh, wow. Yeah, 200, um, and uh, I, I would say I, I use the, the low rails. Yeah. So um, with 200 HP, it's still okay, but it's on the edge of the rails starting to bend a little because yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. it flexes a little. If you use the higher rails, because they are around as well, uh, I don't have these in stock, but I can order it separately. You can go wider. And basically I order the rails per two meter. So oh, wow. I, I order, well, I order it per half a kilometer. So I order 250 <laughs> meter in aluminum. <laughs> Didn't we do the calculation uh, last time? Yeah, like, indeed. How many, the, the how rails, many kilometers of rails you've already used? Yeah. Yeah, and, and how, how much HP that was and uh, what uh, the, um, the turnover in modules would be to fill that up. I think we were close to three quarters of a million, million or something. Oh well, I think I think we actually when we did the when we finalized the math, we were actually quite over a. Uh, I think we actually went over three million already. Yeah, oh, three wow. three million yeah. worth of uh, euros, by the way, worth yeah. of, um, of of modules that yeah. that are residing within your cases. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I buy the rails uh, like in bulk, so uh, two meter pieces and then uh, like uh, 40, 60, 80 pieces uh, per color uh, and uh, some restock. And then I cut it to size. I rarely cut it to size in advance, so I don't have really cut to size in stock, but I have the two meters in rails yeah. in stock because I tend to cut it to size when I cut the, side, the horizontal panels to size. So they are on exactly the same width. So you have a super flush uh, yeah. fit that works uh, works best, um, and especially because uh, there are all, all these people who are saying, "Oh, I have 84 HP, but can you make it 88?" If you yeah. cut it to size, you have to uh, sacrifice a 104 rails to cut it to 88. So uh, yeah, and and then I have a I have loads of leftover pieces. If you have yeah, any, and then, uh, and of course the uh, the turnover on really small cases is, is maybe not the uh, the way you want to no. go. 
No, no. Well, that doesn't happen a lot. Like super small. Uh, no, like these. Uh, I, I like. Yeah. Yeah, the, the really bespoke ones. If you just want to have one single module in a uh, in a case, something like that. Yeah, I uh, made one uh, for the uh, expert sleepers modules. Yeah, for the like ES9, I saw that. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that's, that's a nice just one. Just put it on the side somewhere. There was a small case, but honestly, making such a small case, of course, in materials and everything, it's not that much, but it's still quite a lot of work. It's probably it, like the same the same amount of work that goes into a skiff, for instance. Yeah, and, and, and even a bigger case, I mean, this is just a repetition of the same steps in, in that system. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So and another rule I have, and that, that's something you can see here on the corner, equal is unequal. So if you have that like flush, like super tight, and it's just a little bit off, you see it. So what I do, I have it three millimeter lying back. Yeah, that way so you'll that, never see that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, that also the same counts with uh, with the gaps in the back. So uh, they are ventilation gaps, of course, because it can get warm in the case. But to make this fully flush and etc., that would be more work. So I'm I mean I'm not lazy, but I try to. Well, I'm lazy in a bit, but I try to uh, make it uh, as efficient as possible and to um, to take into account the what can go wrong in production when you're, mm -hmm. you do, uh, you do you work with a router or sending it, it's wood, you know, everything can just break off a little or you have to fix it or that that's just how woodwork works. Um, and, and it's a I natural use, material, of course. And, it's a natural material. Yeah. And, it, and, it's, and, it's, and it's going to work after a while, of course, if you keep it in a very damp room or in a very dry yeah, room, that's going to work it eventually. It will, in a way, uh, work a little, but that's also, you have to, to keep that in mind, so the horizontal part, parts can work a little. I mean, yeah. but the rail skips it in shape, but it can work without, uh, yeah, without uh, cracking. Yeah, uh, that's all fine. Yeah, yeah. And then I fix it with dowels and a few screws, and on the bigger cases, I glue them as well. Uh, but I, I've also made cases like this, and then flat pack them. And then send them to Australia, for example. That saved the, the guy who ordered it. Saved it like a few hundred euros in uh, in shipping, of course. Yeah. In shipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, let's and see. Then, yeah. And then you just I... press it with an IKEA logo to uh, <laughs> to expedite shipping, even. Or <laughs> what do you mean to? Uh, well, to, if you put, maybe cheaper. if you put then an IKEA logo on top of it, they'll handle it like an IKEA case. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll yeah. Expedite it even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, okay. So, what are we looking at right now? So, this looks very yeah. technical. This is this. So, this is my uh, my three D model. Well, it's it's my basic uh, drawing. So, basically, yeah. I, I have to let me turn off some layers. Um, so, you can see we have the sizes. So, this is a six U, uh, and a seven, and a nine, and a ten. This is one of the famous models with uh, yeah. the VCS three D style case. And then we go to the 12. So here we get into like um, custom territory because this is a standard 12 you just saw, but you have a 13 with a real, uh, like a, a one U intelligent here. Here there's a one U on top and one here. Uh, here are even layers missing. I, should, well, I don't know, this is just an old drawing then. Then we go into 18. This was the, the, the bow one. Uh, and, right. and, and I made loads of variations in between. So. Um, and then we have the Keystep Pro. So uh, this one I made for Gert, as you can see. <laughs> this for Michael. Um, but for Gert, uh, I, I made the same one as I have uh, here at home, but one row above. So there are three rows uh, here and then one row there. And then the Keystep Pro is in front. And then here there's space for the cables, uh, the patch cables to come nice. out. Nice, yeah. So, but I know this size because, I mean, yeah, I made, I made, I made this before, so... I think there's even yeah here Eurorack Space 12U 160HP, <laughs> and then the Keystep Pro is one 116, so that's the width. Um, and you can here also see that I work with uh, these are dowel holes, so they're yeah. always 50 millimeter from the side. I have a mold to cut that as well, and a screw hole so that I can glue that, and that's it. Some some margin everywhere to make sure that you can rotate because that's one of the benefits of fixing uh, the the rails to the case. 
Yeah. Is that with an Allen key, you can loosen them a little and you can rotate them. So I always advise to loosen them all, like all the bolts on the side, you loosen them, put in your modules, rotate the rails until it's super flush, fix your modules. And when you're happy, you fix it on then the side. Then it's them like up, yeah. super strictly flush, as, as perfect as you can make it, because all modules are still, even if we have a standard, a little bit off. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So and yeah, here you see a more a smaller one. So this is a one I have at home. And then we go even to that or even to this. This one I have, th these two I made already, but I haven't had time to finish them. But I think this one will look really nice if you have like a Kista Pro in front and then just one row, just like super slim. Maybe just one single for synth voice, for instance, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. So that's that a little fantastic. bit our work. And yeah, then the question to you is because I think the plan was to like to design my dream case, right? <laughs> yeah. What, what is? Do you have a dream case? Is that what? What's your dream? Where do you dream about? So the the dream currently is I need to have a case that's capable of of actually housing all of the modules that I have, but still uh, leave me with some room to expand. Um, yeah. And I'm currently, and I shouldn't be lying here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so that is a, that's 18 U's worth of modules that are r currently racked. So that yeah. is indeed a happy ending case, a rack brute six U, a rack brute three U, and a, a Urian six U case, and all 84 HP. So I would uh, totally- okay. So then, of course, the, the thing will probably be that I'll, I'll, I'll need to go with something at least that high and then likely go in something that's that's wider. You say yes, so you have, um, uh, if we, then we take, uh, let, me, let me take this one as example. I will just copy that and hide that. Um, and if I just start just really quick and dirty, Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, so if I have your, uh, uh, let me see, like this, mm -hmm. and then you, so, and then what's the, it's now uh, 84 HP, right? Right now it's 84, yeah. So, and then you say uh, you have uh, 18 U. Yeah, that's what I currently have okay. combined with all the, the, the the separate cases I've got. Yeah, but but that's like super. This is eighteen. Eh? This is uh, six. Yeah, that's eighteen. Yeah. yeah. Super inefficient. Absolutely. So if you if you have this, this is what you have. You can of course also go to something like this. Yeah. So you you can go wider, but then mm -hmm. it's more within reach because. And what about one U? Do you use that? I mean, there's quite no, some. No, but I I did have to decline some some one U uh, modules because I don't have the space yet. So that would be uh, another thing that I would love is to add at least one row of one U. I, I would do that, yeah, for sure. And but then, then probably, if you yeah. have eighty four, then uh, yeah, we are in uh, one sixty eight. Yeah. Then you would have like one sixty eight, and then uh, again, quick, just quick and dirty. So I'm um, just this is not uh, this is just to get, give a brief idea. So this is yeah, like yeah. one uh, like this, and then I would honestly say that you put the one you maybe there. There, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. probably the the, the if, most aesthetically pleasing, yeah. But if you do this, oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, if you do this, that basically this is three, one, three, three. Yeah. You are in yeah. the PCS, but you go wider. But then you go wider, but then you end up with a, with what I already have. But I, w I would need to have a case that's going to have a yeah. bit more breeding space and expanding space as well. So yeah. then the question I, becomes, I do we thinking, go wider or do we go higher? Yeah, that was what I was thinking for you as well. I mean, you do review reviews on specific modules yeah wouldn't it be cool in a way but I, I i have no idea about that but maybe to have like a i don't know some dedicated spots like maybe even like camera wise sexy that it's like isolated that you can highlight a module in a way I was... yeah that's of course that's that's the great thing so what i typically do is i take one of those cases that i currently have i bring them to my to my desk here I get my camera that I have right here. I 
yeah. point that to the um, uh, to the to the module and make sure that, that, that I have everything set up, and then I film it. So, in a, in, in in a way, if we have a very dedicated or maybe even a um, a special sports for the uh, yeah. for the for the module of the week, yeah. so to say, that would yeah, be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. yeah, that would be nice. So with the engraving above it, like module of the week, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> something yep. maybe something removable. But still, uh, yeah, uh, I was thinking about that indeed. To uh, yeah, maybe something uh, I don't know yet. I have to think about. It. But th that's that's so that's part of the like custom fun stuff. Absolutely. To think of something like this, which is not done before, and it's fun, and we try it, and then you have it. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't work. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. But that's yeah. that's that's the that's the art, and that's of course the the fun thing that we can then do. Uh, but do you think that from a um, from an aesthetic position? So we currently uh, we're looking at a um, a nine new sorry ten new uh, solution where you do get that additional one new uh, piece yeah. of space there. And if you say, so currently we're looking at 168, right? And yeah. how how wide can we then go from uh, from an HP uh, perspective? You say, well, you can go as wide as two meters, of course, but that's of course impractical. But from a practical standpoint- I'm still dreaming of, I, I might do that for Superbooth next year. So uh, two meter- <laughs> Yeah, three, three U skiff, uh, two meter long. I think, uh, what was it again? Uh, uh, I'm not seeing your screen now, by the way. 94 HP. <laughs> 94. 394, yeah. 394 white, so this doesn't make any sense, but it's fun. Then you'll need uh, to have two people just carrying it like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How about, about? yeah. How about powering this stuff? Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. So what? What if we? What if? Just a just a what if? What if we would take this case? Yeah. The the ten U and we would make it like white. So I'm again isolating it for the convenience. Yeah. Um. I take I take all this out. Uh, wait. Bring it up. Take that out. Remove that. Remove that. It's just uh, a joy seeing you work in this program. <laughs> I, I've been using it. Uh, I, I've studied architecture and I've been using it for, for ages. Uh, um, and m maybe not even in a way it's supposed to be. And I have these tricks. Uh, up like that. Wait for it. So that's it. That's one. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, you're going to make another side panel, of course. But first, we need to uh, uh, let me see. And we're going to extrude that yeah. to a certain width. I don't know. Uh, 186. We said that. Huh? Yeah. What what you would need, yeah, like this. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's quite white. Uh, no. So there it would go. be like this, and then we still need some rails. Are you like a black rails guy or? Uh... Yeah, b black and black and brass, right? Uh, that it is a beautiful combination, <laughs> for sure. Uh, I, I also I here have uh, this this nice this one in the middle. That's based on the the classic VCS3 case, eh? yeah. the EMS VCS3, the one from the sorry uh, from the what is it 80s 60s, um, and of course the rail should be black as well. I mean. This this is what you would need, which is already honestly quite a big case, but you yep. know that. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, and the width, I think the width is quite okay. Uh, um, if you look at, um, uh, can you can I can you square share my camera here with you? Yeah, but can then I'm that? just gonna click that, and I should actually just see that we switch that around to see if I 
uh, spotlights. I can spotlight you for everyone. And now I should be seeing, why am I not fit to frame? Hold on, I need to be able to, yeah, now I can see your camera, yeah. yeah. So, so this is my current setup at home. There's a gap on the left. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the Behringer ARP 2600, for nice. which I actually made a solid oak overlay. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, it's in my workshop. I'm photographing it tomorrow. So, but what I, the reason I wanted to show you is that I have a 9U here above with for the Black Keystep 116 yeah. HP. Could, could you point it a bit further down? Yeah, there you go. So Perfect. I, yeah. can see, I can see my own. Uh, uh, yeah, no, no, that's, I'll, I'll guide you. But then, then uh, I have some on the left and some on the right. And in this width, this width that's uh, similar to what we were talking yeah. about for your case. And that still works. So that's what I wanted to say. White, I mean, it might look white on the picture, but mm -hmm. white still works. I'm having trouble reaching out to like these modules already. Mm -hmm. And if you go higher and it's a module you're tuning a lot, you get like uh, yeah, sore uh, arms, yeah. RC, yeah, sore arms because so I'm I'm more convenient with the lower section actually, so I think that's the reason why the ten U really works well. So I think that is something to keep in mind. So white is not per se. Um, a bad I'm going thing, to put yeah. my camera back. It's not per se a bad thing indeed because um, your you you your yeah your arms can easily reach from left to right. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. And Just then the, um, the question is, is because in the, um, in the current case, you have the top two rows um, quite, well, they're, 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 they've, they've got the same angle, but maybe yeah. if you can, you could even, of course, mix and match that again. So make, maybe make it a bit sure. more flush there as well. That's also a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's what I see on your case as well. That I see, okay, you've got more of a, yeah. of a, uh, a gradual change to that. Yeah, and let me just they, go back to your uh, screen there. Yeah. Let me uh, just... Wait, I have to. <laughs> I'm not making a mess. Wait. Uh, back, 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 back. This, like that. I'm moving your stuff a little bit away because it's making a mess. Um, yeah, but then you get more like like this, right? I'm trying to get your uh, screen back, uh, back ah, here. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, and you're back. No, I've got you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So here we uh, have more, then, then you got more to this, but then you make a combination but between having like this, uh, these three and one before you on the lower half, like flat. So yeah. it's easy for you to reach, like the convenient uh, modules you're playing with a lot. And then you, you angle up like this one does. Then, yeah. So you're basically combining those two. Yeah, right? I would say, yeah, that, absolutely, yeah. Um, so then I would again do that quick and dirty. Um, wait, there are a lot of duplicates here. Exactly what I thought. Um, so I'll just take off the, the top row, who cares? Um, we just put this on here. Yeah. Yeah. So and now, now comes something which I think is important. Uh, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> I, I don't know. I see. I, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's not because it's all off here. But if you compare it to this case, the reason I make this is just to make it like I don't know. You know, to make yeah. the balance right. And that's always something I play with. And also, why I have, for example, this shelf here. Yeah. That's for your bus ports put on. So it's a closer. It's not by that far the, away. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, um. So I'm not sure if we are st still there with. And hmm. maybe if you then take off the, the top row from the one on the right. From this one. Yeah. yeah. What, how would that look like? What would that look like? I'm just interested to see. And then so, uh, hmm. It's also not that. It, that basically is a, 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 nine, a 10 U as well, three, yeah. six. Now, so actually, this is where we're looking at three, six, uh, seven, ten, thirteen U. So this is a ten U. That's a thirteen U. So basically, this is the size. The only difference is that you would like maybe this. So we maybe we do it like this. Maybe we just oh uh, yeah, like that yeah. The other way around. So we take. Uh, 
And then I have the center points. We just copy this uh, here instead. Uh, and then, yeah, just double. Uh, what did I do? So this one should be right. Yeah. So, and then that is removed, uh, moved there as well. So, uh, here, now I do this offset of three millimeters. Yep. So it's, uh, like this. That does feel better. Yeah, much better. So now yeah. you've got two one U rows, which is again yeah. not a bad thing, I would say. Oh, uh, two one U rows. Is yeah. that too much? Maybe. Well, what what do you think? Because I've I've got this feeling that I see more and more Euro rack makers uh, stepping yeah. into the one U space. So yeah. it might yeah, make I'm sense. Wondering. It might make it more future proof even. Yeah, I'm wondering if uh, I, I've heard some words about uh, next year's Super Bowl that there are going to be some. Uh, quite a lot of one new modules actually. Um, I'm wondering what they're going to be if everybody's going to introduce passive modules, because mm -hmm. at a certain point you have enough pass passive modules, or yeah. if they're going to change. I mean, I've been thinking about that as well. If you have a th three U module and it's yeah. a narrow one, if you turn that 90 degrees, you have a one U module. Then of course, yeah. Is, is that what what everybody's going to do? Are well, we going I've seen, to? See I've seen. That? I've seen one U. Plats even. Uh, I think it was Plum, uh, an Israeli uh, Eurorack maker, uh, and they've got a 1U Plats. And I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense as well. So it's it's yeah. essentially the same size as the normal Plats, but you just turn it 90 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, that is actually true. Yeah. So maybe, but I'm, I'm wondering, if is is one you then is that efficient because you use more rails? Yeah. If you uh, so uh, like five one U modules or uh, plats modules of one U would fill up a, f a full row. Well, if you put it in the other way, it's one or three. You can yeah. put in as three more modules. I'm still thinking, I'm, I don't, I don't have any space for uh, one U in my case because I have this wall above, so I cannot. You can't go any higher, yeah. No, so, uh, but I, uh, I already had made some uh, adjustments in the other case to make make some smaller one U rows, so I can even play with it after all. But it's fine. Yeah. So yeah, maybe maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Yeah, it's all it's all about what we see is going to happen, of course, in May when we go to Super Booth again. Yes, let's hope so. Um, so shall we put this one in then? And just as, uh, just, just let's let's see how it looks. I'm I'm, I'm interested yeah. to see how this would look in a one sixty eight. Yeah. Uh, then we patch this again. Uh, yeah, this is not like this is like the uh, the way which just works really well for me. It is. Uh, uh, and then you can still see the holes, and I think that's quite important yeah. uh, to have a feeling like how it's built up. Uh, so exactly what you say, where you can actually imagine the rails being, and then of yeah, that, exactly. that's all about the ergonomics of uh, actually working with your modules. The, the, the same point you just made a, f a few minutes ago, where you say, okay, well, you don't want to get any sort of fatigue in your arms. You want to have everything at a natural distance uh, from from where you are and you don't want to be reaching up all the time or um, working well too low even. Uh, I should show you another module with a uh, uh, case. I'm going to show that. Uh, wait, let me share my screen. Uh, <laughs> where is mm -hmm. it? We call it the, uh, uh, the URA control room. Oh. Uh, control center. Here it is. Uh, how do I share? Hey, what's happening here? Right here it is. I can now probably share. You don't see my screen, eh? No, I don't. I, I just see the uh, rhinoceros one. Yeah. Uh, let me check this one. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. So this, this Jeez. we call. Yeah. That's wow. A, yeah so look at that 
So it's actually angles from uh, f from the both uh, side panes. Even. And what's happening like here on these points? This is like freaky 3D curved, super weird. This didn't didn't make any sense. I had to do that in the work to to get that fit. But he, basically, what he said is, I want a big case like this, 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 but I want something never never seen before. Okay, <laughs> I made it. This is fantastic. One euro uh, on top. Uh, I mean, come on, this is nice, huh? That is absolutely. This brilliant. guy was from from Germany, and he drove here with a camper. Well, he went. <laughs> He went here with the camper with his girlfriend to pick it up, but basically also because it probably didn't put, it wouldn't fit his car. <laughs> so yeah, that's absolutely cool. brilliant. But here you see, uh, yeah, this was a lo loads of work and uh, super fun to do. So how this how how wide is it? I don't remember, but I think it's uh, left and right is like sixty something, sixty six, and the middle eighty four to one hundred four. So it's a little bit wider than what we are talking about, but then curved. But oh, this wow. made it super complex. So this like tripled the price because you are basically yeah. taking three three cases and merging them together, etc. And so, then uh, adding a lot of custom work to uh, make it all fit, of course. Yeah, which was fun, and uh, yeah, and that that's always fun. And that's also what I always say. I'm also uh, it's not about uh, money as well. Uh, it's also about uh, fun. So and I'm creativity also, and creating art as well, I would, I'm assuming. Yeah, but with fun, I also mean my own fun in making music with it, etc. So I'm also always up for like nice trades or, yeah. you know, if you have some cool modules or, I mean, I'm th that's fun. Uh, it, it shouldn't always be about earning money. I mean, I have a job and etc. So, uh, it, it, yeah, it's not, it's not about it's not about the money. Um, so yeah, that, so I collect quite a, a few of my gear with that, which is I super can imagine cool. absolutely. Uh, let me see the middle. Flip it. Are we still flush here? Yes. So then, if we think about creative things, and if we say we want to have the um, the, the, the the today's featured module spots, how can we incorporate that sometimes? Yeah, like? I was thinking about that. Yeah. It yeah. So from a from a from a practical standpoint, so what I typically do is I've got my camera right here, and I typically yeah. put the modules that I want to film. I put them uh, fairly far away to the left because the the camera is on a uh, is on a uh, uh, what's it called again? Just a mic stand actually. So uh, I'm yeah, just, yeah. And how would we then? So I've been thinking about just creating my uh, my own uh, blanks and then making sure that they have something like the nice. Uh, modular clubhouse logo on it uh, but yeah, we might think sense. think about something like that even as well what what if there's like uh i don't know we make a box around it of course but what if it's like something like hanging on the side of your case that's actually that's actually pretty wild yeah and then you can take it off and you can put it uh somewhere else like but we we make sure that it's if it hangs there that yeah. there's a uh, that there's also a hole here so you can actually connect your module to the power grid. Yep, yep, yep. And then, but basically it would be like a small, and maybe even uh, for you. you know and what then I mean? you can do, yeah, absolutely. So, so, so it doesn't, doesn't even matter which one you're using. Yeah, and then you can put there the, your blanks in, and then you make a case around it. But you see the shape of the case. If I, um, if I get this and mm -hmm. I then simply, but like like rotate it so here you would have the case if you if we take it off there yeah you see what i mean mm -hmm. that i cut it there and you cut it there so it's basically like a, a tilted case and then i'm going back to my pictures again let me see if i can find another one i made this other three use gif is that the 24 hp oh, too many pictures <laughs> And then the question becomes, how many HP would that need to be? Well, that, yeah, that was, yeah, I, I, it's all fine for me, of course. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking, it's... well, uh, so probably like the the, um, the widest module I've reviewed was the ADAC 112. Um, yeah. And that was, I think it was 53 HP wide. That is pretty wide for... That uh, is, but that, that's exceptional. Yeah. That's, that's extremely yeah. exceptional. Uh, but typically, of course, well... Uh, uh, people might say that even maths is wide with its what is it again 20 hp so that might yeah. actually be maybe aim for 20 24 
Oh yeah, that's think something. About something like this, you know, uh, like uh, yeah, like a, a, a small. So this is for, this was for the expert sleepers we talked about. Yeah, and but if your case itself is big enough, it doesn't really matter how big the one next to it is because it simply hangs in the air. But you can take it off with one or two bolts and you can put it on your desk when that's more convenient. But you can still, because I think the strength of modules, a, a module, if you review a module, the module will never be isolated. It will always be about his surroundings, his friends around it, the, the story about it, because it's not about yeah. that only module. It's always the dialogue with all the others. Absolutely. So you create the flexibility to make a dialogue with that. That, yep. that could, could be really cool. I like that idea. And what you actually could even do is just make it that you can actually just uh, just pick it up a bit and then remove it. That you've got some uh, some easy bolts. It doesn't even need to be yeah. bolted in. But you can actually just right. literally hang it there. Yeah. Let's see. What could I think of that magnet? <laughs> Well, that, uh, that was my first thought as well. But yeah, I'm like, but well, interior, there might still be yeah. modules that might not play nicely with magnets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or modules which are built around it, like like the freaky modules from Error Instruments, for example, which are uh, super we'll, nice. We'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll just put, ask Paul to make sure that they are shielded then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, well, but wider, of course. That's what we would say. So currently, how wide would this be already? I don't, I don't know. I, I just did a quick, uh, this is, so let's say we scale it, uh, uh, where is it? Well, sorry, I'm getting busy myself. So this 141, uh, now we get off scaling. Look, yeah, I see that, scaling. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, say you're working with, uh, is that, 12 HP would that work? Or is that too small? 12, I would probably say something like 20, 20 even. Yeah, 20, 20. Then we are in 101 or 2. So this would be 20. So that's not too bad even. Oh, that's not too bad. And that's compared to your uh, to your to case. Your case that, that's actually. And then, not... But then uh, it will be moved uh, to twelve. Yeah, like you, you need to add and allow for the uh, for the wood and the um, the actual case itself. Yeah. Yeah, but then there would be like a small box thingy around, and you would even and so that and that's the thing I think is interesting. So if you look, we have a three and a one here. Yeah. Would it? So if you look carefully, you see that the one U point is at the higher point and the three U is at the bottom. That's the same as what's happening here. The, what, the three U is on the bottom and the one U is on the higher point. <laughs> so you can turn it around and even, You can yeah. turn it around and also place it here if you want or place it on. So, you know, that's- and, That's and modular. Go, yeah. That's modular. And I go quite far in thinking about that because then I go detailing in, in, the, in, the, in the drawing just as long until it fits like that, because then it's fun. You can place it there and you can place it there and that's cool. You know, that's that's what I like to do. And yeah, then this connection yeah. part, I mean, yeah, not, yeah, like hang it or clip it or click it or, or yeah. Yeah. Maybe I wouldn't use just... anything like, like Velcro or uh, magnets, no. but I would actually say like, um, yeah, like like maybe two, two uh, some two metal slots that just fit together or something to really just click it in, and that's yeah, maybe yeah. even add a look to it even. Yeah, I would prefer maybe even uh, use the dowels, you know, you know the yeah, wooden yeah. wooden pegs, uh, and then I would prefer to cut the dowel holes here already, like one or two to position it, and then here as well, but cut them in the side panels already because then they're always exactly on the same place absolutely you know? yeah. so so i mean you can do that afterwards you can cut all the holes afterwards when you have a proper mold etc but i use this laser cutter because then i can do that quick and it's super precise and it's always on the same place so as soon as my drawing is finished i look at this drawing i don't even make the model normally i look at the drawing and i know already how it's going to look at the end in my yeah. laser cutter so Absolutely, and then because yeah. this is a super simple flat drawing, my laser cutter basically does that. 
Um, and then I said the, certain, the different colors are the, the depth engraving. Uh, these, these dowels are also engraved out. So the laser just goes back and forth, taking it out. And then I have my model. So making these dowel holes already in place would be really convenient. And then, yeah, then we need to, to find something to, to connect it. Yeah, yeah. fun. Yeah, fun. so what, what I'm also thinking, and that's of course, and that, that brings me back to the, um, uh, to the expert sleepers comment is when you typically want to use your um, your ES9 or uh, a similar like um, what's it called again a DC coupled uh, audio interface it's it's if you want to visualize it or if you want to bring your 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 physical world into VC uh, VCV rack for instance so yeah the thing that is also well you don't want to end up with a jumbled uh, cable mess so with something like this you actually have the flexibility to say well I've got my uh, end of patch location on the right hand side or this time I've got it on the left hand side yeah. at the top or at the bottom so you can yeah. actually make sure that you can end up with a less cluttered patch yeah. but still yeah, making if, sure if that this... you can have everything there if yeah. your reform mod module would be here, uh, it would not be here, would, but would be in the middle, you would have a hard time of actually isolating it on, on yeah, it would be cluttered with cables, as we all know. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and I'm also thinking of maybe making something around it, but that can also be like simply, uh, I don't know, like what, what if you have a, a wooden panel and then, um, uh, what did we say, 102 by 102? This is like so. Imagine this is like the uh, uh, the back panel, say, the, the for you, for you one. Yeah. And then I just uh, split this with this. Uh, oh, am I doing? Wait. Uh, uh, wait. I, I'm doing something. Wrong. I wanted to make uh, like a. Uh, uh, <laughs> there you have it. There you have it, exactly. Uh, yeah, this is always uh, nicer, three dimensional. This, so, so, for example, so what if this would be um, uh, like something around, and then the 3U would be uh, here? So here you would have the 3U, and uh, here you would have the 1U. So you have it like isolated, you know, what really I mean? isolated, like, like, actually with a physical distance from it. Yeah. 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 Something like that. And maybe this is too much, but, you know, uh, well, more it's something like to think that. about because you yeah. already have the, well, how, how, how thick of, um, uh, of, of uh, uh, planks do you use? Like uh, 12, 12 mil, yeah. 12 mil. So you will yeah. always have at least that uh, 24 mil distance to the rest of the modules because you've got two. Um, yeah. uh, to skips there and then you've got yep. the back and then of course if you want to have something like a distance or maybe if you want to include a blank or something you still have that space there too yeah yeah i think we're on to something are you i think we're yeah. on to something i like the fact that it's hanging on the side in a way it it, it feels like maybe uh maybe we should hang more stuff on it what else could we hang on there because plant, this is of course example. the this, sorry <laughs> a plant like a small plant pot or a phone holder <laughs> or a lamp or a, who cares we can do a so one of the things so now i'm, I'm think thinking out loud brilliant I'm, I'm going to fix a plant pot on it if you want it or not yeah, you need Just, to have you need to have succulents right yeah well, hold on, hold on. like like here like uh yeah these things Just, you, you need to have something like this there yeah, yeah. Because all, like, all since uh, YouTubers use 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 plants in their videos. Yeah. Yeah. So we hang it there, and then there's a plant coming out there. I love that. That is absolutely wild. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got it there, and then you've got it, and then of course I'm a big fan of symmetry. So you, then you need to also have it on the left hand side. Um, I also really? I, oh. I was I was also thinking about your comment about lights. Because one of the things that, um, and this is not just me, but I think that every uh, synth YouTuber is, um, is is thinking about is how do we work with lighting? Because of course, if I want to have a proper, pro properly lit 
uh, module expose. I'm, I need to use uh, diffused lights and everything like that. So that's not something yeah, that we can incorporate. Multiple, well, multiple, yeah, yeah sources. multiple ones, and we yeah. need to make sure that it's, it's dif so as as diffuse as it can be. So, yeah. is that something? Well, it's 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 typically the other side, of course. Now, I, I would say uh, I have some experience, of course, with phot photography, with yeah. uh, studio photography, and um, I would I would not put that on your case because you would like distance. You want to have you it on the other side, of course. Yeah. Yes, you want one back high, the most diffuse, and then one uh, more from the camera direction, which is uh, uh, a little less in the volume, but then, uh, and then another one to uh, erase your shadows, and then you have the best. But so I, I have thought about uh, like putting a light like here as well in my, in my own uh, like small studio, but then you always would create these really sharp shadows, and that's something you would not want on your videos probably. No, indeed. So then oh, the oh, other it's, it's your signature, then it's fine. That's a different thing, of course. Indeed. What I'm also yeah. thinking about is, of course, um, uh, maybe like a microphone. A microphone holder would be amazing, of course. And like, then you, you you just the only thing you then need to make sure of. Uh, hold on, I'm just going to grab something. <laughs> I should have this here somewhere. Yeah, there you go. So this is what, um, so I've bought the Rode PSA-1. That's the um, the microphone stand I'm using. And that has a clamp, but what you can also do, and this is probably like the, the simplest hack there is, you can actually also do it like that, where you just have to drill a, what? how much? Can you show that again for me? Yeah, sure. I didn't have the screen, all right, yeah. So you just yeah, have to drill one hole there, and then you've got this nice, flush thing and you just place your uh, microphone uh, uh, boom okay. arm in there yeah i was already uh, like uh yeah like uh, this uh i don't know you know yeah, something <laughs> yeah that that's that's the whole idea yeah perfect it's getting the most freaky case ever you're not getting a plant on both sides by the way i'm not doing i'm <laughs> i'm not but, the, but then that. i need to, I, I then i need that to be modular that you can swap it between uh, yeah between and both you need sides. something on the other side i mean it's not about a plant here and a plant there no you have a plant here you have a, a, a microphone holder here you have a module i don't know here you charge your phone uh, I, I don't know you know it's it's about uh, that's super okay. fun now um now we're getting somewhere <laughs> okay now we've got so you know um um robin vincent right uh, from um right. molten uh, music modular yeah, 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 yeah. so uh both robin and i uh, share a, a a real love for the microsoft surface uh, devices which are which are tablet based microsoft windows computers so i've got one of them set up right there uh, near my synth stand where i typically just use that to visualize things or or um, maybe make sure that we have uh, if i want to listen to some additional music i've got my oh another key thing what we need is we need to have a dedicated support for a mixer for a, a desktop mixer a desktop mixer yeah you don't yeah you don't have a euro mixer you have a, well a different... you typically what you typically do is you've got your um, you've got your studio monitors on, on on each side and you typically what you then do is you get uh, your your audio signals coming from the um, from your euro system and what i've seen is that i've seen a lot of people then just using a very simple mixer to to cross that bridge from modular to their uh, studio monitors so that might also be a thing. Okay. Sorry, I was a little bit distracted to be honest. Um, I was checking the dimensions from the for the Microsoft Surface. Ah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I kind of rudely missed what you said about. Yeah, no, no worries, no worries. Let's let's do this thing first. Uh, it, this might be too thick. But I I was I, I was thinking this like. Is, is this the size? It's not. That's that's about right. Yeah. I'm, I'm... Yeah, something so like it, that. It could be like it could be somewhere like uh, and then 
you know and then you might want to angle it a bit um as well yeah like your command cent center as well yeah Oh, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to angle the Microsoft Surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like from the top. Is there is there like a, a, a holder for that already? I mean, that would be easiest, of course, if you yeah. just get exploded somewhere there. No, so what I what, what, what my approach would probably be is if that could just be a um, a piece of wood, because I've got, I've got dedicated cases where I can put them in. So what you would then yeah. do is you would grab the case just bolt yeah. it on the um, on the plate and then just get it in there. Yeah, yeah. So if I just make a piece of wood, so um, and then I do it like this. Yeah. Basically, I make this, and I just have to make sure that that there's some kind of arm or I don't know whatever or yeah. uh, some some piece of wood to, to have it there. I mean. Yeah. He left this, this me, is this is becoming a battle station. Yeah, that is, yeah. But in the core, it's still, if I remove all the gadgets, it's just a super, you know? It's super straightforward, yeah. Yeah, super funny as well. Yeah. And you don't have, you don't use anything like a Keystep Pro or something to... Uh... Well, I've got a, I've got a Keystep 37, uh, but to be quite honest, I typically only use that if I'm actually just reviewing a single module. So I'm, I'm typically just using that that, that separately. So it's, it doesn't yeah. have a dedicated spot. But I'm just looking at the rest of the gear that I've got here. Is there anything that I say, well, I always would like to have that near me as well. I see a neutron on the bottom. But then, I've got a neutron yeah. there. I've got a crave there. And I'm waiting for the edge, of course. But, well, because, mm. um, of course, that's that's the, well, it's the poor man's defam, of course. Yeah. Um, Defend is way cooler. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Oh, I just recently got a subharmonicon. Oof. Oh man, that's that sounds like... that produces. Unbelievable. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's going on my holiday. I'm taking that on my holiday. That's the only synth I'm taking. Maybe the tr 8 s because I need some practice with that. But the subharmonicon, just that with a headphone, you know. I you're done for days absolutely yeah. oh really it's amazing yeah so there's no well, guys the, the, well actually the crave has a very special place in my heart because that was the first semi-modular that i got and i yeah. didn't even know what a mother 32 was i just saw hey this is great this is something i can afford and i'm just going to play with it and then afterwards yeah. i i well yeah. i probably would have heard f about moog before that uh but then of course um well Everyone, uh, everyone has their Behringer moments, right? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Well, I have the ARP, the ARP twenty six hundred. That's the one I, uh, I, I keep for now, uh, and the others uh, I sold because uh, I'm a huge fan of Roland and of Moog, and uh, I yeah. really appreciate the way these guys work. And uh, absolutely, uh, but also like small, uh, like module makers, like uh, well, uh, Paul from Error or uh, the Shackbot guys. The, they, they uh, I really appreciate what they are doing, uh, and I, I I like to support that. So I actually stopped making overlays for the neutrons and stuff because yeah, of you said that. Yeah. yeah, but it's like yeah. So it's 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 there's nothing bitter from my side, but it's just like yeah. Let's focus on other stuff. Yeah, I'd indeed. It's, it's not you packages. anymore. Yeah. No, no, no. But for the for the twenty six hundred, I couldn't resist. Yeah. <laughs> it re well, looks didn't, so cool. Didn't, um... Someone released a a boutique or, or a smaller twenty six hundred recently. So after Behringer did theirs, Cork did uh, the twenty seven hundred. Of course, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's eighteen hundred euros. I think that's a different price tag. Oof. But that that sounds honestly better. And well, that's a different discussion. I'm not uh, an expert in sounds <laughs> and making news and stuff. I'm better with boot. That's what I always say. Indeed, cool. Indeed. So. Um, but this is a little bit like uh, how we play and what I mostly do is uh, that I dive into it further because I, and I have an idea like uh, where to work with and then uh, I dive into it further and then we have some iterations so I show it to you again so I made this and then you say oh I don't like the corner or I don't like that or blah blah and then I make yeah. a change and but basically as I see it now the core is quite uh, quite simple and I really love the the bottom so it's as you can see, besides of the all the features we're adding, it's not really like 
super custom. I, we are not like reinventing how I construct cases. But no, we, we, we're taking we're taking case. a very successful formula and we're just yeah. expanding. So I, <laughs> I do have to say, well, this is of course one of the, well, probably like the most um, eccentric cases I've I've ever seen. But um, <laughs> how, <laughs> and um, just just from a from a from a power perspective, um, yeah, how would you approach that then? Yeah, maybe we should just uh, like uh, oh wait, uh, let's erase all the clutter around it. Yeah, or not erase but hide it. So power wise, uh, first of all, you have to do your homework. Oh jeez, that's, uh, what, that's yeah. a good thing for me. <laughs> so modular grid, make a rough planning. Like so, don't look at the cost of everything at the bottom because that's frustrating. But uh, especially look at your power demands. Yeah, <clears throat> and based on that, we're going to determine. Um, <coughs> sorry, uh, how that many PSUs you have? So I work uh, with the uh, mean wells uh, because they're the like budget friendly but still strong power supplies. Everybody's talking about noise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But like for this works for 99% of the people, this is the perfect solution. 90% like yeah. of the people, um, and also in the budget because. You can go to a linear power supply, but then you go from a 60 euro power supply to 400 euro. So yeah. when you want to put three of them in the in your case, I'm fine with that. But I think in, in the budget, uh, you, you want to keep it uh, more interesting. So, but you, you go to module kit, you check your power demands, and uh, the meanwhile, uh, give uh, 2.8 amps. So wow. uh, that's quite a lot. So if you uh, come to like around four and a half, five, we take two. If you come to six, we take three. You know, it's you just want to be safe with that. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we go to busboards. I work with busboards from Modular Sintlab, uh, Robert, yeah. uh, a, a Polish guy who lives in, uh, in the Netherlands. So this is the size of his busboards. What I mostly do, if you look at the site uh, view, let's hide this one for a sec. This, if this is the busboard, I place yeah. one mostly, I don't place them here because mm -hmm. then your deeper modules, you might have a problem there. So I place them mostly underneath the rails. Okay, yeah. Because then you have a little bit more space. And I would say place one here. And then um, I would say place one uh, oh, it is, uh, well, here. That's why we have the shelf there. Yeah. So, um, and then another one uh, uh, like here, or what? That's just like horizontal. Uh, and that, and that's something that you would then need place again uh, underneath yeah. the actual rails yeah yeah behind, yeah behind the rails so when when there's a, a, a deeper module you, you're not uh, it's not in the way and then here you would place it there but then you know that on the top row your maximum depth and I, I don't I think if we take it like from here to like here or we talk about it's still 40 mil oh, so wow. I, and then take like the best boards with a little margin for so that's still fine. But if you have deeper modules, you can uh, place them here. We can even decide to have this part like placed back a little. I mean, we yeah. can also remove it a little. And I mostly place the the PSUs here behind it. Yeah, and that's so going to yeah. add for a lot of uh, additional structural integrity, of course, as well. Yeah, the, just that the, just that, the that, that, uh, that 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 that's. Uh... That one yeah, there. but still, like the rails together with the uh, with the wood panels, that creates such a the rails makes the case like double st stronger. Oh wow! Already. Yeah, great. And then, well, then we have here the bus boards, and then I would say, or well, copy, we can mirror them. I would say uh, place them also on the other side, so you yep. will never have problems with um, uh, reaching out, because if you have one, then it might be possible. But if you put in a module here. And it, there's only one there. You put in a module here. I mean, your cable might reach it, but if there are all modules in the way there, so with bus, bus ports, I always have the feeling like, make sure you have enough. And, and and as you said, those typically don't cost that much, right? No, they're like thirty euros, something like that. Yeah, and would... then on the in the, in the grand scheme of things, that um, it's, uh, it's, it, uh... it doesn't really add up. Then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, and then your PSUs are in the back here behind that, uh, that shelf. And then uh, I can connect it for you. You can also do it yourselves. I, I think it's a good thing for you to connect it because then you know 
what the power is in your case. It's quite simple. You might even be able to make a video about it. Uh, um, it it's good to understand how your case is. I mean, there are videos of people screwing it completely up. There. Oh people, no, yeah, that I've seen. I've seen some of those. Yeah. <laughs> so what I mostly do is I make. I, I, I mean, you know, there are instructions, etc. But I make like a basic setup, and then you connect all the other power cables yourself. But then you know, like, hey, this this cable is a little loose because something got stuck, or you, you're convenient in putting it back. You know, you have to understand where the power is, where the the 230 volts is on, and what is yeah. only what is only 12 volts that you're actually turning off the power when connecting your modules. <laughs> yeah, don't laugh about it. People, no, I know. I've seen I've seen I those videos as well. I just plug in a live case. I just plug in. That's not a good idea to do. No, 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 no. Absolutely. Well, you, you might be able to get away with uh, with a digital module. But if you've got a a proper uh yeah. analog or even well and especially I've, the ones where you can flip the power cable to the other uh oh remember yeah that? yeah i've got i've got some tube powered modules here now and ah, nice um, yeah. i would not dare to do something like that with these because yeah. no. they they will actually blow up in your face if you do that yeah can can imagine that so oh wow. so yeah that, that's what i would do uh, power wise just keep yeah. it uh keep it simple and strict and make sure you you can reach out to uh so if you go like wider than 104 HP, so from 126, I always recommend going wider and uh, going double in power. And what I also once did, for example, if I take uh, an example of a little more shadow case, more, like a smaller case, where you wouldn't be able to fit two, I, I did it like this, I put by one side, here yeah. and I put there. So you can always reach out somewhere, you know, that's, yeah, yeah. So I would say don't budget on that. And, and in this case, we're with the with the modular case approach that we just talked about, where you can hang these things, um, we could actually even consider to do rows two and three to add them to to, to really place them at the 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 the, the actual sides of it as well. Oh, so you right. that could also yeah, be a yeah. thing. Yeah, that you place it there so you can uh, yeah. reach it easier. Yeah, and what you can always do is have a. Uh, uh, flying busboard cable going to your uh, flex case. Yeah, why not? I think that's actually a great idea. So if yeah. you've got um, several, mo if you want to show, for instance, several two or uh, or four yeah. four HP uh, modules at the same small. time. I, I have here. I have this mini tower, and above that, I have a a, a, a small row for for modules. And what I did, uh, I just had a flying busboard cable, and I took all the sockets in between off. And that for me is that just extending the power from one case, from the bigger case to the other. So uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's that's a great idea, actually. Absolutely. Then it's all still bare wood, uh, and so now we get to the um, uh, to the other. Let's see if I to the colors. Uh, wait, you see now this? That doesn't work. I think. Now I see your. Um... Well, it's That's not your not... porn collection, but it's something yeah, else. Exactly. <laughs> um, uh, this is my setup. Uh, see, so this is uh, like oak wood. Yeah. It's just really a small picture. But then I have, uh, this is a popular one, which is uh, brown. Uh, yeah. But it's like a walnut color. Uh, this is untreated wood. And then we have uh, black. We can go to uh, a purple or something like that. And this is uh, quite a new one. Persian red, it's called. Oh, and nice. I'm going to see if I can. Uh, I just made quite a big one with that. Uh, and this one. I'm wondering if it now opens in that screen. Not seen anything yet. So. Oh, it's coming up. No, no. I have to share the other screen. Wait. Oh, this one. Oh wow! Check. That is really nice. Yeah. It's warm. So that's uh, yeah. It's uh, it's called Persian red. So it's um, so what I use um, uh, somehow we are actually also with my other company a distributor for this oil in the, the Netherlands and Belgium. But it's uh, uh, an oil from Denmark. Uh, it's pure linseed oil. Uh, and then there's added pigments to it. And they have a, a color scheme of, uh, we might be able to, to look at it another time, but they have like 
I don't know, 50 colors. And the nice thing about it is super pure. So it's linseed oil and, and pigment. And the good thing is that it really soaks into the wood. So it's not a layer Absolutely. on the wood, but it, it goes into the wood. And the wood actually determines like how it behaves, where the color is sucked in or not. So you get this really nice grain accentuation. It's really, you know, stunning. This is and great. This is this is the red version, but they also have it in bright pink and yellow and blue tints and greens and etc. So mostly ask like, what's your color? And what I like, especially when you're doing something special like this, I mean, let's order a small sample pot and then do something cool on it, you know? Yeah. Indeed. I'm not sure what the result will be then, but it's like also, I know how to prepare my wood for it. Yeah. And then I put it on and then we are all surprised in a way. Um, we can always make it black. You know, but that's like black. That's is always also... we can always cover it up afterwards. Yeah, and what what I normally what I mostly use is uh, Osmo uh, hard wax oil, um, and that's also what you use on floors. But that that keeps the natural stain of the of the wood, but it protects it. And the good thing about that is that you uh, I do multiple layers, and you can sand it really smooth, so it's really good protection. But then it's like pure. Uh, wood color and with osmo i'm not so fond of the colors because that's more like a, a color yeah. coating over it and especially with all these corners and and stuff it doesn't really work really well so i mostly and if you then ding it then you'll immediately see it of course that as well and here it's in the wood so yeah. it really soaks in um so i think that's I, I, I mean, Persian red is a beautiful color but there it are uh, several other colors there's a really really nice deep blue with which almost becomes like i don't know a super high end case or you have yellows the the pink believe it or not but the pink is stunning it's like bright pink it's stunning it's really oh beautiful. that's great that's great but yeah so yeah that's uh that's basically what we can do and you see what it does with the grain i mean it's amazing yeah that, that's 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 beautiful so yeah. from, from from my personal uh taste i would probably go with something that combines um, very acid green and almost neon purple, and okay. so, so what I what I, I would yeah, then do <laughs> if, of, if if you can do something like because how do you how do you then actually color these panels? Would you take them apart and then uh, oil them, or do you do them when, when they're assembled? Uh, I pre no, I always assemble it. Uh, I cannot find it. Ah, yeah, I see it. Green. Uh, this is actually something fun as well. Um, where where is it? Um, no, this is the other one. Here it is. <laughs> That's green. Wow. That's a guy who. Went uh, the case in the same angle as uh, his smoke next to it. Yeah. Oh, that's but, beautiful. Uh, but, you, but you don't uh, really get the grain out no, of it. No, true. This is a color. This is a more coloring. So it's a more. Uh, it doesn't soak into the wood more. This is a, a different type of linseed oil coating. I like it less. I like the other one more. Yeah, when you really have something yeah. that that really. Um, well, just really gets into the wood and make sure that it accentuates the wood. Uh, that's something yeah, I'd like as well. True. Now, with with the uh, with the uh, oil, uh, with the brown oil and the black oil and the Osmo, uh, I oil it uh, when the case is uh, in one piece. Yeah. Because uh, I know that it works. With the new oils, I always uh, take the parts, uh, take the case apart because then I can better control it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because every oil soaks in the wood different and in the corners you, it can get uh, cluttered up a little and it become darker and yeah I'm just a little bit more flexible but that's fine I mean test fit everything is fine yeah like check all corners sanding all edges are nice and smooth etc take it apart oil it leave it for a few days to dry and then do the final assembly and then, uh, yeah. then you're done yeah. yeah, but that that also allows for multicolor uh, cases as well, because then you say, I'm just going to do the side panels, well, for instance, uh, purple, and then all oh, of the... Oh, you're thinking multicolor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's... absolutely. Well, uh, if, uh, if you've got green and purple, I, I, I want uh, to combine all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. I'll just order a small, uh, a few small uh, sample pots with the supplier, 
and then uh, we use with the sample pot i can almost uh, oil uh, no, not a full case but quite a, a big part of it so then we can go wild on the on everything yeah. and I'd, I'd love to if, if you've got any any pictures of the um uh of that acid uh, pink you just mentioned that's also something that that's yeah. al always it's great to it's have that something. Um, is that more see. covering or is that more like really enhancing uh, the wood itself? It's more enhancing the woods. Oh, uh, that's great. And let me think. It's... A little slow because we're talking. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Uh, I can just edit all of this out if needed. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start the sharing here. Okay, <laughs> now we're green. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that's, that's is, the exact color I was looking for. Yeah, this is Douglas wood, so it will be a little bit different on uh, oak, of course. Uh, so, yeah, then we have, have some others. It is a little slow here. This is no I, I did one. This one is not nice. That on the oak, I tried that. The yellow didn't work out as well somehow. Uh, this is white. I don't like that. That's this more like is, a white uh, or Italian yeah. red is also like the Persian red, but a little bit more darker. Yeah. And then we go into the grays. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Paris. The Paris. Uh, this one is stunning as well. Oh wow. Parisian, Parisian blue. And the, the blue, pink yeah. goes like this. This Persian red. Uh, Violet, yeah. Yeah, it's not. I, I'm not sure. It's one of their newer colors. Ah. This is all the stain. Maybe Violet, but I'm not sure. No, it's one of their new. I'm, I'm getting a new color card because they have just printed a new color card, etc. So yeah, this is a little bit like it's on on oak. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, and you can do crazy stuff with it, and this is even a little bit uh, how do you say modest still. Yeah. But they they really have wild. Uh, and when you're up for an experiment, uh, let's go for it. Absolutely. I once uh, made made a case for uh, for super booth, and I made it yellow, uh, and I didn't like it, so I just sanded it all off, and I made it black. I mean, you cannot go from yellow to blue or something that doesn't really soak in. A, a, but black covers everything. Black covers so, everything. Yeah, that's the black case I had there. So, yeah. No, beautiful. But still, I love it. Um, and that's something I, I truly like about Eurorack nowadays, where um, color is becoming something that's no longer frowned upon, where you have, of course, you've got your Dreadbox Chromatic series, which have all colors of the... Um, or the rainbow, so to say, but you also now have, and I've done a, a video on MRG Synth uh, that has now adding more and more colors to their uh, to their lineup. I love it. So why not have Eurorack cases that are, are just as colorful as well? Yeah. Now I, I have here maybe, can I, sh I can share this, I think. Um, we're still live? Yeah. yeah, we're still live. I'm just keeping an eye on that. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Oh geez! Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So here, this is the 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 pink one, the Floriana. I love Floriana. that. That is I, that is um, exceptional. And they have uh, this is like yeah. Now the Tokyo one looked nice as well. Tokyo. What's was, Tokyo? Uh, it, was, it was one of the greens a bit further down. Yeah. That, oh, this, no. uh, that little bit blackish. Uh, yeah, yeah. Black black green. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's not an, as acid and as, as I was looking for, but here you go. Oh wow! The and this bright, bright, bright maybe. Yeah. That's great, yeah. yeah. But that that can be completely different uh, on the, the Rio. On oak, yeah. yeah. The on Rio, yeah. yeah. Because yeah, the, they also changed their names because I think yeah, Bilbao. This is the Persian red, the one I just showed. Yeah. You wouldn't pick it out here, but there, it's amazing. Yeah. No, but I, I do see where you what you what you mean when you apply that to uh, to oak, yeah. of course. Yeah. And of course, you, you you only use like reclaimed oak, right? So yeah, I use reclaimed solid oak floors. Uh, yeah. And that will add to it as well. So that's something. But I love I love the fact. So maybe uh, we should not go 
all the way wild with what we're doing with all the <laughs> and stuff. But I love the fact that we're talking about like a, a thing on the side, like this extra case that yeah. really makes sense structurally as well. It's really nice. I can take that into design. And I like the fact that you want to go wild in color. So I think we can do that as well. That's something like, great. Let's uh, let, let's yeah. make sure that we do that. Um, so I we've already been talking like for for, for almost an hour and a half. So I don't I want to uh, <laughs> take any more of your precious time, Ian. Um, but what I do want to do is I want to do uh, again. Thank you so much for uh, for taking your time out of your busy schedule and showing me and of course everyone who's looking at what goes into um, synth case, Eurorack case design. Uh, what your process is like and also to well uh, pop the hood a bit and show how you work and what's yeah. possible and all and that. And this is the start eh? because I mean I know what's going to happen now but now all the hood work starts. Absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then of course I, I would like to uh, ask everyone who is indeed looking for a new Eurorack case or for a replacement or if someone is just looking for uh, for ideas to uh, Absolutely, have a look at your website, play with the configurator, uh, but also uh, feel free to reach out to Ian as well through uh, through through Messenger or through Instagram. And not all, not all at the same time, but uh... well, <laughs> I can't guarantee that. But <laughs> yeah. I uh, uh, make sure that we I'm all pay, uh, that we all pace our requests, of course, and do indeed make sure that we are all. Uh, we're all talking just to just one single person, so he can't answer everything at the same time. Um, but that being said, again, I thank you so much for um, for this great oh, this great pleasure. deep dive. It's a pleasure, pleasure. It's a great. It's a great. I've learned. I've learned so much, and I uh, I, I I do think that the uh, the audience learned as well. Um, so that being said, I would like to say everyone. Um, it's almost well. It's the holiday season. We're uh, reaching the end of twenty twenty one. Um, so the channel will uh, celebrate its first birthday in January or February as well again so uh, I do need to look that up when I actually started the channel um, so I would say everyone please enjoy the holidays celebrate the end of this year celebrate the end of um, and the beginning of 2022 and at the same time make sure that we all uh, stay patching stay playing but mainly Make sure that you stay safe and healthy. And I uh, will welcome you to our next video. Thanks so much. Cheers. Thanks, bye everybody. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.